The views and opinions expressed on In Touch are those of the guests and do not necessarily reflect the official party or position of Backyard Broadcasting. Any content provided by our guests are of their opinion and they are not intended to malign a religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, individual, or anyone or anything. Good morning and welcome to In Touch, a Sunday morning public affairs program dedicated to the health and welfare of the Susquehanna Valley residents. I'm your host, Joey Michaels. Join us at this time as we interview the difference makers in the community who want to help make the Susquehanna Valley a better place. This morning, we're going to be talking with Ron Frick and Jan Ann Todd of the Lycoming County United Way. Both of these folks are so enthusiastic about this project they've got coming up, and they are so excited. But let's go ahead and get the interview started, shall we? President of the Lycoming County United Way is here, Ron Frick. Ron, it's great to talk to you again. How you doing? I'm good, Joey. Hey, thanks. It's great talking to you again this morning. So I just wanted to, you know, start by... For, for those of your listeners who don't know who we are, um, I'm joined this morning by Jan Ann Todd, who is our Director of Community Impact, and I have the privilege of being the President and CEO of the Lycoming County United Way. Um, w- one thing I did want to mention before we talk about the Lights of Love uh, is we're going to be wrapping up our, um, our coffee promotion with our friends at UPMC um, that's going to happen, uh, happened on December 29th and 30th. So by the time everybody listens to this, it will be over. But we were partnering with UPMC and four local coffee shops, Alabaster, Backhouse, Sawhorse, and Julie's, to provide free coffee to UPMC workers uh, on the 29th and 30th of December to sort of end 2021 before we launch into 2022. So we're very excited about the opportunity to partner with our friends at UPMC again uh, on this particular promotion. And uh and then launch into the new year with the with the with the lights of hope. So, uh, what exactly is the lights of hope? So I'm gonna I'm gonna let Jan in uh, answer that question because she's been instrumental in working with our partners in putting this thing together. Well, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Joey, for having us. Um, Carrie and um, Angelique at Sojourner Truth Ministries uh, had an idea, as so often happens with other community partners. And they came to Ron and just talked about the luminaries and how they wanted to just recognize the community because of the last two very, very hard years and, you know, dedicating um, Lights of Hope to the community. And it just kind of uh, went from there to, hey, let's do healthcare employees. Let's do, you know, UPMC, who's right in our backyard. And... Um, it just went from there, but they have been truly the ones who were instrumental in getting this started, and we are just all working together now to make this happen, and you know, maybe we can do it again next year. Oh, outstanding. Now, was that just this year when, when everything just kind of clicked together? Yes. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, and, and the nice thing about this is we, we had a similar, um, a similar event that um, came to us last November uh, around Homeless Awareness Month that that was another idea that our friends over at Sojourner had about, you know, featuring folks in the homeless community or that were that were residents of some of our local partners. And so we did our cardboard stories uh, campaign last November during Homeless Awareness Month. And so anytime Angelique calls me with an idea, I usually I usually listen because they're usually pretty good ideas. Um, And then, you know, it helps us to it helps us that we have a really solid working relationship with with UPMC. They've been a supporter of the United Way for you know for almost a century now, uh, and and we are so, we are celebrating our hundredth anniversary uh, coming up in in April of 2022. So we basically approached them and said, would you guys help us with with helping to fund the cost of the luminaries? We'd love to do it on your front lawn because it's a central location and it's in a you know it's in a pretty tough neighborhood. Um, and, and also, um, you know, as Jan Ann said, you know, it's been almost three years now um, since we've all been dealing with this pandemic and, and our healthcare workers, you know, not just at UPMC, but all throughout our community um, have really put in a lot of work and a lot of effort and, you know, are working double and triple shifts to take care of all of us. So it's just, a, it's, we just think it's a great community event to be able to do with, you know, one of our large partners uh, in, the, in the community who supports us in many ways. Uh, and, and a smaller partner who's, you know, feeding hungry people and taking care of folks um, at Sojourner Truth every day. So um, it's a win-win for everybody. 
Absolutely. Now, you mentioned there's 1,000 luminaries. Am I correct? Yes. Is there a significance to that? I mean, the, uh, the number. No, no we just uh, we picked the number. I think we started off with 500 and then thought, well, you know, if we put them closer together, it'll be bigger and brighter. And we just went with 1,000. I think thank Ron was the one who thought of that. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure, Joey. It wasn't me hearkening back to my... My Bush era days of thousand points of light, mm-hmm. um, but but I think you know it's a big space, and so we thought a thousand you know might might be a, a good start this year, and then I think you know our 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 vision you know moving forward and the original idea from from Sojourner was to try to get these luminaries out in other parts of the community, and so next year you know hopefully we'll have a little more time to be able to you know potentially involve other community partners and you know, get the light out into the city and, and the county, uh, you know, even more significantly than we're doing this year. Oh, that's going to be beautiful. 1,000 lights in front of UPMC. Now, how long will that be lit? The event starts at 5, um, and, you know, I'm planning on saying a few words. Angelique is going to welcome everyone, and then we also have um, Derek Slaughter, who's the mayor of Williamsport, speaking, as well as uh, Patty Jackson Garris, who's the interim president at UPMC. So, you know, we'll start around 5 o'clock. We'll, we'll have you know, a few short remarks, um, and then those the luminaries will be lit uh, all night uh, on on Friday the seventh into Saturday the eighth, uh, and then we'll go we'll go take them all down. They're, you know, obviously paper bags, so we're we're a little bit dependent on the weather, but they're they're um, they're pre lit um, you know candles that are that are battery operated, so we don't have to worry about you know fires and flames and things like that on the front lawn of the hospital. Oh wow. I just I'm just picturing this uh, this the light of love. It's going to be amazing, and you, you're going to be able to see that for blocks. Yep, you know, and it, it's it's interesting. We we as a staff have been working the entire month of December. We we decided just to kind of take a pause and and reflect a little bit on on the gratitude that we all have for a lot of things in our community. And so we spent pretty much the month of December, you know, just kind of posting things that we're grateful for and using videos and photographs from community partners to do that. And then uh, we thought, you know, what better way to celebrate the beginning of a new year than to talk about hope? Uh, and so this idea of lights of hope uh, on the front lawn was was really kind of a culmination of us thinking about what were we grateful for the last year. And there, there was lots of things to be grateful for in 2021, even though it was a pretty difficult year for most of us. And And then looking forward to 2022 and what does that look like? And Hope was the first word that we all kind of came up with when we were thinking about it. And nothing says hope like light. And so we thought, you know, the, the luminaries was a great idea. And, and, and hopefully we can, we can help put the vision that our friends at Sojourner had, uh, you know, into action. Now, this event is... this is just the inaugural year of this event. My hope is that we can continue on maybe every year doing this. And just like Ron said, get, you know, bigger and maybe have some satellite luminaries at some of the other UPMC offices or... You know, who knows how big this can get. Oh, I'm, I'm hoping huge. I'm hoping to be part of uh, this huge event as as we are starting this on its, uh, I'm going to call it already the first annual. I'm just going to do it. I love it. Uh, there you go. All That's right. Incredible. Now, here's a question. Um, you, you mentioned the date is coming up this Friday, January 7th um, at 5 p.m. Is there any significance to the date? Not, none at all. In fact, um, you know, it's really just the, the best time for us to, to try to schedule, um, you know, try to schedule all of the different folks that are speaking. Um, we were originally going to try to do it closer to the beginning of the year, but you know, it's, it's the holiday weekend. It gets tough for everybody and people traveling, and so this was this was really the first best time for really the four of us that are speaking to get together in one place. I love the idea that you're doing it at the beginning of the year because you're kicking off almost like a year of hope. Uh, it's not just uh, you know, it's not something that is picking out a day and then working from that you have got um you, this is the beginning of the year so you might just as well say it's the beginning of the year it's the beginning of a year of hope and i just think it is a fantastic idea absolutely and that was our thought too and you know i can't say enough in advance of the volunteers that are helping to set up the luminaries and take the luminaries down the next day i mean this wasn't just us here at the united way and not just sojourners but Many of our community partners are coming together to make this happen. 
Is there something that uh, I know that you mentioned that the the volunteers, uh, not only at the hospital, and you've got the volunteers in the different fire companies uh, and the employees there at UPMC are very influential in everything they do. I've got a niece uh, and nephew, her husband, uh, that are some of the best paramedics here in, in our county, in my personal opinion. Um, but they are making differences every day, every single day out there. Is there anything as a listener that I can do to you know, contribute to this event to say, I want to be part of this. I want to make this happen. And I would love to see it be huge. Yeah. You know, I listen, I think the first thing I would say to anybody listening is, you know, come out on, on January 7th at five o'clock. Um, we're going to have some refreshments that the volunteers from Sojourner are, are providing. Um, you know, and we, we hope that, you know, healthcare workers that are looking out of the windows at UPMC and, and EMS drivers that are leaving the hospital or, or bringing folks into the emergency room, you know, just get a little glimpse of what's going on on the front lawn as they're driving by. Uh, and then, you know, hopefully we can expand that into other areas next year. We, we have a lot of partners, um, you know, that are just in that neighborhood. For example, the American Rescue Workers and the YMCA and lots of folks that we work with in, in the neighborhood, um, you know, that we, we, hope we, can, we hope we can expand it. But I, I think anybody that's listening to your, to your broadcast, uh, you know, that wants to come out, you know, and just enjoy, uh, you know, enjoy some, some camaraderie that, that evening. You know, we, we don't expect it'll take more than about a half an hour, so it's not a lot of commitment of time. Um, but I think it'll be rewarding for people who come. Now, for somebody that's not familiar with the campus there at UPMC, where can you park and where can it, where, where will you uh, be most accessible? In other words, if, if I'm not familiar with, say, the, the parking routine there uh, and I'm coming from out of town, where could I you know, park to see the event or park to attend the event? Well, I think one of the advantages is that it is a Friday night at 5 o'clock, and so you know, uh, we're, we're not in a shift changing situation at the hospital. So I would suggest that people who are coming, there's a couple places that you could park. Um, you could park in the YMCA's parking lot. Um, at that hour is probably not super crowded. And then also, you know, in any of the UPMC lots that surround the hospital, the event will be on, on High Street. So it's really the corner of Walnut and High Street in, in downtown Williamsport. So any parking around the hospital, um, you know, that's accessible, I would say, um, you know, people could people could park in. Well, we're, pr- we're praying we're praying for a little snow, a little white snow might be nice. Um, that'll 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 make the lights stand out even more. Um, so you know, and then then the other thing you know that that I would say, Joey, for anybody that's listening, is that you know we've been very fortunate uh, you know here at the United Way and in this community to be serving a lot of these agencies and partners for you know for going on a hundred years now and. One of the things that's been really important to me and looking forward is that, you know, we've got another 100 years to look forward to. And 2022 is the year that we're going to kind of kick off the next 100 years of this organization. And so what better way than to start the year with a little bit of light and, and featuring one of our, you know, one of our really important partners, um, you know, who's going who's gonna to participate and whose idea it was to even start the event. So, we're, you know, we're thrilled to, you know, to be involved in, in our community and to use, um, you know, our resources here at the United Way and those of our partners to be able to pull something like this off. And, and obviously Backyard Broadcasting is another one of our partners. And so we're, we're really appreciative of the work that you all do in giving back to your community and doing public service kinds of events and, and programs like In Touch and, and other things that Backyard does. Um, we're, we're super grateful for all of you being interested in the work that we're doing and, the interested, and interested in the work that the community is doing. Oh, absolutely. Now, as a listener, um, where can where can I find you? In other words, uh, your website uh, that will have uh, maybe different events on that I can contribute or I can learn how to donate or be part of. Uh, do you have uh, access to uh, the Internet or Facebook for the average listener? Yep, sure. So any any social media platform, we're, we're really active on Facebook and Instagram, LinkedIn and uh, and Twitter. Uh, So you can look for posts on events and and things that the United Way is doing there. Um, Listeners who want to check out our website, uh, we're at www.lcuw.org. And for folks that want to give, there's lots of ways to do that. You can send a check uh, to the United Way offices here at 1 West 3rd Street. You can give on our website. Uh, There's a secure way to do that uh, with a donate button on the website. Or you can text to give, which is 
something that um, some of your younger listeners may be interested in doing. You can text the word Live United to the number 50155, and that will give you a credit card processing form, and you can give that way. Um, so lots of ways to support us, both financially and by volunteering. Uh, you know, anybody that's interested in volunteering, I would say reach out to us here at the office, and we'll we'll plug you in. Um, and just, you know, just come out and enjoy the evening on, uh, on January the 7th. Big, huge thanks to Ron Frick and also Jan Ann Todd, both from Lycoming County United Way. I am so excited to talk to those folks every chance I get, and they always bring us some great information. So thanks again for telling us all about a Lights of Hope celebration. I look forward to seeing you there Friday, January 7th. I know it's going to be a perfect, perfect opportunity to just give thanks and just make sure that the world knows how much we appreciate our health care workers. By the way, thank you for listening to In Touch, a locally produced service of Backyard Broadcasting. The views and opinions expressed on In Touch are those of the guests and do not necessarily reflect the official party or position of Backyard Broadcasting. Any content provided by our guests are of their opinion and they are not intended to malign a religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, individual, or anyone or anything.